Manhattan. Hello. Hello, Andre. <laughs> hey, Shannon, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I am doing all right. I'm glad. Um, uh, how's weather over there? And right, I'm guessing you guys are dying. Actually, it's kind of weird and crazy, and proves global warming is real because. It's been like pretty hot, like around 80, and then at night it'll just storm with like lightning and rain, and like there was a tornado last week for some reason, and I'm just like, that doesn't even make sense. (laughs) Yeah, and then right now it's just, it's really hot, but I also drove through hail on the way here, so I'm kind of confused. (laughs) Yep, no, goal warming is a thing, everyone. Um, uh, What can we do to... the world. Yeah, uh, um, recycle, number one, number two... um, well. Manage cow farts? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> we're fucked. Anyway, what are we talking about today, Shannon? We are talking about the one thing that we may never achieve, which is, well, I mean, because global warming, for one, yeah, but precisely. which is <laughs> immortality. Um, how do you feel about the idea of living forever, Andre? I love it and hate it. So I love it because I am your average Joe that's scared of death, not because of the pain just because like it'll end the experience of living and i like living but number but also i dislike it so like i like the idea of being able to live forever because i don't want to die but i also dislike it because i just think everyone who i love like if they're also not immoral they will die and i will not and that's gonna suck and i don't know so you're coming at it from like a weird vampire perspective you're not assuming that they're gonna live as well no i mean if if they are i guess but yeah You're the chosen one in the zombie apocalypse and in immortality. I love it. I don't know. <laughs> that's, um, that's interesting. We have very differing views. It's like you you kind of view it differently. I, I, I think that won't even make my list of reasons that immortality scares me. And I and it is a weird subject to talk about because we are scary talk. Like I'm sure right. some people are like, is this is this actually scary? And it's I think it is. I think it's absolutely terrifying for the reason that if we live forever, then this pain, this horrible trauma that we as humans commit on a daily basis will never end. And you know what? It needs to end. There needs to be some so, end to humanity. I think the audience has got a good glimpse into your life. <laughs> I, you, okay. <laughs> According to a lot of things that I was looking up to, people agree that immortality is a bad idea on like a like worldwide scale. It would be catastrophic. Like we can't, like feed that many people and if it was like all of this generation that was immortal or whatever think of like us saying yeet until the end of time because we wouldn't change that much you know we're all stuck in our ways oh uh, yeah so, i I yeah. yeet myself to the grave that's what i do um <laughs> yeah yeah so um if you are ready i guess we can get started yeah let, tell me more about about the pros and cons basically you want to know more about the pros and cons okay well i was kind of holding that for the end but i kind of dug myself a hole here (laughs) dug myself a hole you you do you do your timeline the way you want to do it go ahead do your thing so first i want to talk about cloning and then i want to talk about kind of like that cloud idea of uploading our unconsciousness unconsciousness which we kind of talked about uh in one of those episodes earlier and so that's kind of when we planted the seed of what we're gonna do but Right. Those are like very futuristic and shockingly they're closer than we think. And according to Moore's law, which just for a reminder, that's basically like whatever technology we have, is just going to get way more advanced, way faster, the more that we discover it. Mm-hmm. Um, in theory, some of these like things could happen in the next 30 to 40 years. So in our lifetime, there's a chance that we will be, I would say almost indestructible in terms of aging like we 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 could be ageless i won't say immortal because if you get blown up you're dead like that's just the rule for immortals that's the that's like a rule for like zombies and vampires too you know like you can't undo that (laughs) where Cher already did that she's already indestructible by aging oh yeah you're right i mean sort of (laughs) i kind of think she looks a little bit plasticky but (laughs) <laughs> a little bit <laughs> yeah it's it's not the most graceful aging i'll say that <laughs> so barring explosion barring nuclear war or you know just your average train hitting you there's a good chance that you can live pretty much forever with these so 
if that's what you're down for. It could be possible in our lifetime. So the first one is cloning, which we all obviously heard about Dolly the Sheep. That sheep, right. my god. I heard about this when I was in middle school, I think, and I just lost my mind because it's just amazing. <laughs> like, I can't believe we did this. And, like, I think it was in, like, the 70s or 80s, right? Yeah. Yes. It was pretty dang early. And obviously it's not the type of cloning where you kind of just, like, shoot a beam and it's an exact copy immediately. But they have to age from an embryo into a baby into, like, a big sheep or whatever. Mm-hmm. So... That's how that went. <laughs> like if they made you a twin, like they just created a twin for you. That would be really weird because I already don't like myself. Can you imagine how rude I would be to my twin? <laughs> so when we're thinking about cloning, we we kind of go into the segue of like, well, if we can clone an entire like creature or human being, we can obviously clone organs and we can clone body parts if you like lose yours or you're you're in need of one. Mm-hmm. And so that's it's not as sexy as just cloning yourself and being like that's me now but (laughs) you can have a clone on standby or you know just organs that are cloned from you on standby for when like your heart starts to fail so say you're 55 they clone your heart you get a new heart and you're good to go and that's just that that erases pretty much all the mcdonald's you had in your life it makes you so much better and like we could do that. We could easily do that. I mean, I don't know if we can. I I have seen open heart surgery on YouTube and it's terrifying. So I think we can. Um, so we're gonna get. <laughs> sorry, is there anything you want to say? <laughs> I was gonna say, have you seen um, that movie with Abigail Breslin uh, and Elizabeth Banks? It's from like uh, I can't believe I know the actor's names, but I can't remember the, <laughs> the name of the movie. It's from like ten years ago. Yeah. It's like her sister's oh, locker or something. My sister's keeper. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I know what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, this is actually something that I mean, it's a little different. Like, basically, um, like the the the, little, the young girl that's like um, the older, obviously the older sister is like younger sister, and the older sister is like sick. The younger uh-huh. sister finds out that like, apparently she was like actually planned to be born specifically so like the older sister could have like an organ transplant. It's like kind of weird and fucked up. Yeah. Um, It kind of makes you question the morals of this whole thing, which is why... Think about what you said. Go ahead. Well, it's, it's, it's why it's best to just clone a specific organ rather than clone a human being or, you know, have a kid just for their body parts. Like, that's morally wrong, I think. But then it jumps into this other aspect of people saying, well, you shouldn't have power to grow anything in a Petri dish because you're not God. And it's like, well, we genetically engineer your food and you don't seem to care about that, so... Yeah. I mean, I guess some people care, but... I mean, it's a little different. Like, I've read a lot on GMOs, and apparently they're totally safe. So, or, or maybe that's just what they want us to believe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. If this is a, a tinfoil hat podcast. So, so um, I was reading this article called Immortality Through Regeneration. It's on a website mm-hmm. called Almost Human, Robots and Cyborgs in German Fiction Ooh. and Film. So, you know they're legit, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh (laughs) So I'm going to talk a little bit about how this process might work or why it's possible, I guess. So there's embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells, which have been very powerful for helping us kind of figure out how we want to do this, how we can move forward to extend life in this way. So the embryonic stem cells are much more powerful. They're actually known to be omnipotent, which means that they can basically become any special cell in the body so you can use it to replace almost anything so your heart your leg it'll go in there and it will just do it you know but and that's because it's from an embryo and then the adult stem cells are semi-potent meaning they can derive into only a few types of cells limited to the point of origin in the body so if you have an adult stem cell for the stomach and you try to put it in the brain, you're in big trouble. So it's not, not great. Mm. And they're looking for ways to fix this, but basically these stem cells are allowing doctors and scientists to be able Wait, to, huh? If I took, if I took a butthole cell and I put it in someone's brain, <laughs> would they be a butthead? I think that you're talking about Trump, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, maybe, maybe that's what happened. Yeah, like you know, cut, give him a break. It was, it was, it was all a weird like medical freak accident. Actually, if you shave his head, you'll see that it's just a huge butt crack up there. 
<laughs> so this is how medical scientists would be able to grow skin and bone tissue from the patient um, to graft it onto the victim, stuff like that. And then because the the embryonic stem cells are harvested from in vitro <laughs> embryos, uh, people get kind of mad. <laughs> yeah, They don't like that. They don't like using embryos for anything. And it's, it's kind of this concept of playing God, like I said, creating and using living cells. Um, and especially centering this onto cloning, if we were to use clones in this capacity or even cloned organs, it's kind of creating life in its own way, at least in a part. And yeah. I mean, I guess that's scary, but I just wanted to bring it up just so we're all clear on this. <laughs> Okay. So basically when they produced Dolly the Sheep, also I was wrong, she was produced in 1996, not the 70s or 80s, wow. Okay. Um, researchers were able to use this technology to take adult human cells and turn them into stem cells. And then the stem cells could grow into any type of tissue in the body, which we were just talking about. But with this discovery, what they managed to do is um, they took the cells from a 75-year-old man <laughs> and... Okay, so I think he was dead at this point, but they took his skin cells, right? And they managed to regenerate it. Like, they, like, made more skin of the same man, basically. So, wow. in theory, you could do this to yourself and grow new skin, so that's cool. So, this breakthrough, it, it kind of helped to kind of say, like, well, we can do all kinds of transplants with tissue and treat Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, heart disease, even spinal cord injuries in the future. And so that's one way in which you could have regeneration for your body. And basically, in theory, because this is actually debated and I'll talk about it later, and I'm sure you can guess this, is that only the wealthy would be able to afford something like this. Um, if you want to cure for your MS, you have to be rich, basically. If you want to cure for aging, you have to be rich. And that kind of brings up the question of, well, what if we're in a society where only the wealthy get to be immortal? In time, Justin Timberlake, anyone? <laughs> and yeah, so that's a whole... Also, I don't know, have you seen the movie The Island? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson, and it's it, they all think that they're just, like, not clones, and then they're just clones for body parts. I mean, we've been thinking about this for a long time, and the collective unconsciousness, mm, apparently. Interesting. Um, okay, so did you say that once um, scientists extracted, uh, like, the stem cell that they needed, would they kill the embryo? Um... I, I think that it's more like the embryo has been used, so it's not... Like, once you take the stem cell out, it's not viable anymore. Right, so then, like, they would have to toss right. it. That would obviously raise the ethical question of, like... Well, I mean, we're like, already abortion is pretty hot yeah. in, in 2019, so, like, there's no way. Yeah, and um, it's... it's... Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, it's it's an embryo in a petri dish in a lab. It's not inside of a human woman. And I think what people have a problem with is women, not unborn babies. I mean, one, I don't agree completely. <laughs> Two, um, I'm also not saying I agree with the anti-abortion stance. Um, but, oh, sorry, that was two. Three <laughs> is... Um, if anything, I think it would actually be more shocking if the embryo isn't inside a womb to like actually see it, not literally see it, but metaphorically see it being tossed. If anything, guess, that would be even but... less acceptable than what we're already debating, which is already kind of dumb since this was settled like decades ago. Well, what um, if the embryo itself was made from donated sperm and a donated egg? At what point do we say like that still deserves to have a 40 year 60 year lifespan oh. because i don't i don't get it i get that you're saying that like it, w it wouldn't like it shouldn't hurt as much because no one wanted that embryo because like it was from donated like reproductive cells but it would still be just as human but and, like every I mean, time you get your period or you release an egg and then it just goes into your pants like it's it's <laughs> yeah but that's different i think i think people's issues with like oh well but now it's like an actual like little little baby but it's, not. <laughs> uh, it's not just an egg and it's not just a sperm cell right it's like it's fertilized it's 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 a combination of both and so for a lot of people that's like oh it's cross a line now it is an actual person mm. and so well regardless <laughs> i just think that human cloning would be fucking hard just for that reason especially um, at least the way we're looking at doing it right now with the stem cells because that's the only way 
we can source them yeah. man you're like you're on for a very uphill right. battle like i said it's not the only um, way we could just use adult stem cells from a like adult but they just don't work as well so it's like why right. but and yeah i mean it's it's kind of like don't create a clone that's gonna have a full life if you're just gonna pull the plug or whatever but i don't know in my mind if it doesn't have a brain it doesn't have a right to vote so <laughs> So, <laughs> so another article, Science and the Future of Cloning, by Patrick Takahashi, talks about the fact that science is actually pretty close to finding the aging gene in the human genome. And so there is a potentiality that we could just, you know, take a pill and stop aging. Because aging is actually a fault in our genes. It's not really ideal <laughs> ideally we should be able to live forever. madonna has entered the chat oh my god yeah madonna has entered the chat um because there are some creatures that do technically live forever um and well the box jellyfish yes lives forever i think that's um, one yeah the, so like long, long story short the box jellyfish when it feels pain or stress it'll regenerate itself backwards to its youngest stage and then it'll start like aging forward again so i mean that's theoretically like an infinite yeah. lifespan theoretically um, keyword yeah <laughs> um there's also a myth of the lobsters but lobsters don't actually live forever yeah. other than, like that's, uh, that's the myth. <laughs> so speaking of the human genome sequencing the first one actually cost three billion dollars um and that was kind of just a, a composite of the every man several volunteers um but actually the cost of doing that now it's actually getting down to about a thousand dollars and so in theory it might not be that expensive to clone yourself if you really want some organs just for all those crazy people out there who are just willing to do that you know i'm not going to judge you but just want to point it out that it might not be only wealthy people if you can find a way you will find a way and other things that have been cloned just so we can have a little bit of fun with this um, after Dolly, there were some mice, there was a horse that was cloned, a cat that was cloned, <laughs> and a dog that was cloned. And so we already know this can happen, and there's actually some laws already in place, even though it's not in practice. So the UN actually voted to prohibit human clo cloning, and the European Convention on Human Rights and Biomedicine pro prohibits it as well. And if you can believe it, <laughs> because I can believe it, <laughs> Human cloning is legal in the U.S. <laughs> because the U.S. does not I, give a fuck ever about anything. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, but it's more like there's no regulation of it rather than, like, we specifically stated that it was legal. It's just not illegal because we have no laws about it. That's fair, um, but what if we do, you know? How are we going to decide how late you can kill your clone? Well, I mean... <laughs> You kind of just model them after other countries' laws on it. I mean, a bunch of countries have already done it. So, yeah, um, yeah there's ways to do it. I think the UN is going to overturn that at some point in the next couple of centuries, maybe even less so. I just hope um, when they do, we found a way to clone without um, the embryo stem cell. Not for any like moralistic standpoint, just because if anything, that would make it way harder to do i feel like less accessible like i don't know like just like straight up getting an embryo like where do you get that um, <laughs> i don't know <laughs> maybe there will be like devices know, like, to like stab in your uterus i'm not sure well an embryo would need to be maybe. fertilized so never mind but also so kind of kind of yeah. hard <laughs> um but but yeah so i think that'll happen um I don't know that actually like one cloning to be a thing though. That's a whole other mm -hmm. question. I don't know. What about you? I wouldn't mind. I'm a huge fan of Orphan Black, so <laughs> I would be down. <laughs> um, I just think that the ways it should be used are probably not the ways in which we're talking about now. Like I think cloning organs for surgeries is smart because the wait list for those things are insane. Like people just oftentimes die before they even get an organ. So that's really, I think that we need to think about the people who are alive and not the embryos, but whatever. <laughs> but in terms of just like, should we clone someone? I think, yeah, if you just feel like it, why not? But then you have to sacrifice your beliefs and just let that person live their life because I don't know. Why did you clone them if you didn't want them to live a life, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. So, um, going back to the animals that kind of live forever, you already brought up the jellyfish. Um, in 
Ed Regis and George Church's article in discoverer.com, there is talk of something called a hydra. It's a small aquatic animal and it looks kind of like a cactus and it doesn't undergo aging whatsoever. It's basically biologically immortal. And so this actually does something even more helpful, which I'm sure the Kardashians would be interested in, and Madonna for sure. It can get younger. <laughs> so it can actually revert to its younger state. Um, yeah, like the entire population can. And wow. so if we can study those, then we can learn a little bit about it. But it does, even though it can escape death through aging, it's still not safe from other predators eating it and disease, stuff like that. And then yeah, we're going to talk about HeLa cells now because this is actually really interesting. And I didn't know, because I've heard of HeLa cells before, but... Yeah, so these actually confirm the possibility of cellular immortality because we're talking about cell death and the way we age and stuff. So Henrietta Lacks, she was an African-American woman and she suffered from cervical cancer and died in 1951 at the age of 31. And so just for research, I guess they took some cell samples from her cervix and they were codenamed HeLa cells you know, Henrietta Lacks. Ho John Hopkins researcher George Gay. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. <laughs> it might be, I don't know, it's a G-E-Y. Okay, we're so immature. <laughs> he found that HeLa cells could be grown in lab glassware and kept alive indefinitely, like literally indefinitely, <laughs> and that the cells could replicate, they could grow, they could pr proliferate and just basically take over other cells. Wow. <laughs> and so 60 years after they were taken, so this was like the 50s, there's still HeLa cells doing totally fine. Um, so that's crazy. And that could definitely lead to something in terms of, you know, living forever, I guess. That's the goal for some. Wow. <laughs> so kind of moving away from this gross biological stuff, nasty, um, we're going to talk about... I guess not robots. We're going to talk about the cloud, the matrix, the AI. Yeah. So <laughs> this one, this first one is actually very, very reminiscent of that short story I was telling you about, Learning uh -huh. to Be Me. Apparently, <laughs> right now, today, I shit you not, there is a company that is trying to do this. So Philip Perry is writing about this in an article. Basically, it's a startup. It's called Hume. Hume? It's either Hume or yeah. Humai. Basically, the CEO, Josh Bocanegra, he says that <laughs> he plans to, well, not he specifically, they plan to freeze your brain, create an artificial body for you, and then transfer the brain into your new body. <laughs> okay, like right now or in the future? In the future. His target for this is 2045. Okay, that's ambitious. Yeah. Yeah, it is ambitious, but I mean, you never know. It could happen. So HUME stands for Human Resurrection Through Artificial Intelligence. So basically making us into robots. I mean, in a way. Cyborg. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of use cyborgs as... No, I guess you're right. I think that does kind of fall into it. It's like organic mixed right. with AI. Yeah. So basically, the way they're going to do this is they're going to collect data on the members of... Um, of this project before their deaths using company developed apps, which is actually probably what they're doing to us right now. And we don't even know. <laughs> yeah. With 23 and me. Yeah, exactly. But they're, they're going to analyze our conversation styles, behavior patterns, thought processes, how we like function basically. And obviously that wouldn't be that difficult using Facebook and stuff. I think there was an episode of black mirror about this. Yeah, I was about to say that was an episode of black mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then as the brain ages, they're going to use nanotechnology to repair it. And then cloning technology to kind of help make the brain last in the new artificial body and then they're going to make sure that your body can control it or sorry your brain can control the body just like it's your own it's just your little robot body <laughs> <laughs> i i think if i was going to do any or immortality this would be the one although i already said that's kind of sketch but they are using a real brain in theory <laughs> yeah um yeah, and then I found it interesting, kind of in the same article, it says, Elon Musk says we'll need to create neural implants that'll link our brains with computers in order to keep up with the singularity. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then there's also a 
another initiative in Russia <laughs> that's kind of doing a very similar technology. It's called the 2045 initiative. So obviously they're aiming for 2045 for this as well. And this is where they want to develop a technology which would allow someone to transfer their personality into a non-biological carrier and extend life perhaps indefinitely. The reason this is different because it sounds basically exactly the same is that they have different methods for how this is going to look and how you can do it. So I'm not sure if they want you to have a choice or if they're just going to choose the one that they think works best but here are the choices so it's called the avatar project <laughs> and uh, not unlike the movie avatar <laughs> so you would have a artificial human humanoid body called an avatar <laughs> and an advanced brain computer interface system so this is where the human brain would be inside the avatar maintaining it to be alive and functional um, but a later phase of the project would create an artificial brain and then just transfer the individual consciousness into that. And then, yeah, so that's the first one, Avatar A. What? They want to do this by 2045? 2045. Wow, okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, and then the next one would be, it's a robotic copy of a human body remotely capable of interpreting commands directly from the mind and sending information back to the mind. And basically this would be the movie Avatar where he's in a wheelchair, but there's an Avatar walking around. So it's like two separate, yeah. but it's the same mind. And then Avatar B would be an Avatar in which a human brain is transplanted at the end of one's life and it has an autonomous system providing life support. That's the one I described earlier. Avatar mm -hmm. C would be an Avatar with an artificial brain to which a human personality is transferred at the end of one's life. And this is basically, it's just your consciousness in a computer, or <laughs> a computer brain, basically. So who knows if it's even you. It's kind of like uploading yourself to a cloud. And then here's Avatar D, which I think is interesting. It's a hologram. <laughs> so this is the ultimate goal of their project. They they want you to upload um, and just become a hologram so that you can avoid disease. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Um, and this kind of made me think, well, um, is it possible that this has already happened and that we're all just consciousness in a supercomputer? Because I think that's possible. I mean, yeah, but that's literally a whole other episode. Like, yeah. <laughs> like the simulation episode. But wait, wait, wait. Like, why would that be the ultimate goal? Like, how are you going to eat if you're you hologram? Don't. How are you going to enjoy the pleasure of eating? Um, Maybe we'll have artificial food. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Remember that SpongeBob episode when Plankton ends up eating his, like, hologram <laughs> oh, sandwich? Oh, yeah, because he loves light. Yeah, that's how Planktons eat. Oh, my God. I yeah. just connected the dots. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, one thing that popped in my head when I was reading this is I was like, wait, what if gray aliens are the avatars for future humans? Ooh. Yeah. What's up? I don't know. That could be possible. Uh, and then, what if aliens are just future humans? Then we talk about this. Right. But what if the humans are still in the future, but they send their avatars back in time because time travel physically is impossible but maybe they can control it remotely if that makes sense interesting i don't know it's a theory <laughs> okay so you something else oh yeah i got i have a lot <laughs> okay go ahead, go ahead. okay so one thing that i really really liked when i was researching this because i kind of got real deep into this i'm like i was so disconnected from reality i'm like is this really gonna happen so there's something called a matryoshka brain and this is i think it's a russian term i'm sorry i butchered that it's a hypothetical mega structure is proposed by robert bradbury and it's based on something called a dyson sphere of immense computational capacity. So it's basically a stellar engine. It, it it employs the entire energy of a star, but it's to drive a mm -hmm. computer system. And it gets its name from nesting Russian dolls. So basically <laughs> what this means is that, okay, it's possible to upload human minds into a virtual reality space inside of a matryoshka brain. So it would be like this huge, huge computer just holding a bunch of human consciousness. So we'd live in The Sims. We would live in The Sims, basically. <laughs> <laughs> or like, what if we already do? You know what I mean? I mean, if we already do, I guess a continuation of this wouldn't be bad. Because it's so good, we can't tell it's fake. So I'm fine with that. 
<laughs> so um, I think I'll just finish this off with uh, the pros and cons. So basically one of the pros of being able to upload our consciousness or at least remotely control it would be space exploration because you know like it, it would take a really long time and there's a lot of perils in space like yeah. zero gravity has a lot of effects on the human body and radiation and so it would allow for people to explore space in like such a more efficient fashion so that would be really good um and then <laughs> this isn't really a pro but it's kind of more like a t to convince you that this is actually closer than you think in 2009 henry markham a researcher in the in the blue brain project he successfully s simulated a part of a rat brain um it, he basically made a what would you call it? I guess an artificial brain from a rat. And he thinks that within the next 10 years, and also he said it's in 2009, so I don't think it's happened. He said in the next <laughs> 10 years, we could have a detailed functional artificial human brain. <laughs> yeah, no, it didn't happen. The best we have is Sophie. And she just makes jokes about killing people. Which I mean, props to her. <laughs> She's doing her best. Um, hmm. Also, in, in theory, I guess one of the things is it could fight Alzheimer's, and that would be pretty cool. An uploaded mind would never technically right. fray. It would never age in the same way or lose its data. Mm -hmm. um, so basically another con would be overpopulation in terms of if we could be ageless with our organs, not necessarily a cloud, but just in the organic sense assuming we're still on earth and some people have said well if we have the capability to just completely replace all our organs all the time then shouldn't we have enough technology to create food all the time and it's like yeah but then you think about like we do have that now it's just that corporations run our, our entire world and withhold money and food from people today on this american life anyway <laughs> <laughs> so I that's just something to think about and if everyone can live forever then <laughs> I mean yeah. yeah for some reason I just think about all the beefs we have and like <laughs> all the bridges we burn and like you can never escape those people ever <laughs> yeah yeah that'll be problematic and then my reasoning aside from everyone just thinking like it's it's inappropriate to talk about consciousness in terms of it being forever or that we can create consciousness and artificial brains and all that stuff i just think it gives life meaning that we die you know we get the time that we have and we spend it well and you know like you could say the same thing about so like does cancer give life meaning like does alzheimer's give life meaning like <sighs> i don't know about that but i, I understand don't know how it's the same as death <laughs> well like those things are basically death or they often lead to death like even if you don't have any of those actually like i was gonna say even if you don't have any of those people still die of old age but that's not true old age isn't a thing like people die because they succumb to one of the diseases that are common in old yeah. age but nothing dies just because it's old um so so it is about diseases and diseases do not give life meaning do they so i don't agree with that line of thinking but i get what you're saying because it's something we hear all the time i just think that um we shouldn't think of it that way and if, if we don't, then we'll probably want to put more research into death because we'll see it as a disease instead of a natural part of life. And maybe we'll be able to beat it. And maybe that'll be good. I don't know. You want to beat death? Yeah, I don't know. No, I mean, I don't know exactly in what way, but I think it'd be a good idea, especially if I we can know. also. Why? Well, go ahead. No, I just I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think people <laughs> I think that we should be constantly learning and growing as a species and our kids and their kids and their kids should all be moving towards something great but i don't think that we should be there to see it because i don't think that that's fair i don't know why it just doesn't sound right like it it's it's like we have our time and they have their time i don't know it's a very hard concept to grasp i think i mean i myself don't even grasp it completely i'm just kind of saying it without completely comprehending it but i do believe that um I don't know. It, it makes sense to me. But I get what you're saying about it like, being unfair. I was going to say that it must be hard to grasp it because, like, all we know is that people die. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Well, I also think it's scary because, like, 
it's just there's too much like there's too much that you can see and it starts to feel like you're not actually yourself if you like if after a hundred years you've replaced every single part of your body except maybe your brain like you must feel like a disassociation from yourself the world is so different from what you grew up in like people who are like in their 80s now say like I don't even feel like I belong in this world. It's so different. Like, and obviously, like, if you're so young, like, you can adjust. I mean, young in your brain, exactly. you can adjust and learn. But, like, should you? Like, <laughs> and, like, I mean, that's I, another I, thing. I think that if you can, you should. And again, I think that if you have a young brain, like you said, like, all people wouldn't feel as disadjusted because they'd be able to learn as fast as they did when they were young. So, like, rejuvenation, like, if it actually became a thing, like, it would solve that problem as far as like you not being yourself like the human body actually like completely replaces all the atoms it's made of every like 10 years like you're not the person you were 10 years ago like literally like your molecular composition is completely different uh, so like really we're just air um and so that wouldn't be that wouldn't be like a like a um concern for me that like i would feel like i'm not me anymore because like i've i've never really been me um, um, I will say like one of the main reasons I do think that it's a bad idea is because this would only really work in a utopian society because and I feel like unfortunately we live in a dystopian society and I just don't like the idea of living 200 more years watching people just bomb each other and be terrible like that just sounds awful <laughs> <laughs> I think that socially it would be a bad idea <laughs> Um, I think that maybe if I'm older, I'll change my mind, number one. And number two, um, I think that, um, oh, actually, I forget what I was going to say. But yeah, like, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe if I was older, like an older person, I would, I would think differently about this. And I'd be like, no, I'm done with life. I want to die. Oh, I was going to say that um, maybe people living forever could lead to a utopian society. Not sure exactly how, but there you go. Hmm. Or it would lead to cannibalism because everyone would hate each other. <laughs> yeah, but like then people would still die and we wouldn't need any food because we just eat each other. And, you know, I mean, you, you should be happy with that result because then like no one starves and people still die. So there you go. Maybe cannibalism is the key to eternal youth. <laughs> okay. Speaking of cannibalism. Now, let me give you my <laughs> attempts to immortality throughout history. Please one do. of them. The first one I want to talk about is um, not quite cannibalism, but basically taking something from another body and just putting it on yours. And that is blood. And that is going to be a common threat among the things that I'm going to talk about because all people love putting blood on themselves. So, blood is life. <laughs> or in themselves. Listen, so apparently rich people today are infusing themselves with the blood of young people. Um, <laughs> is this a like, satanic cult? <laughs> yeah, fucking like straight up. They're just like – and this is uh, – the, the article – that um, I read, it's a it's a top ten article basically. Um, it uh, it was really interesting. Like it, it was like so it mentioned that there's been studies that have been done with mice, with like older mice getting injected with the blood of younger mice, and then oh, yeah, the old mice like f like seem to rejuvenate a little and like live longer. Um, and, and so that's why humans are doing it. But it mentioned that like this is actually a gray market. I had never heard that term before. It's not a black market. It's the gray market. So apparently it's because it's it seems very like it should be black market. But the U.S. actually doesn't have any like law against buying blood from young people. So there are like legal companies out there. Of, only a few, of course. But they're still out there that like that's their business like you oh go God. as a young person like donate blood as if you were doing it for the red cross but you're not <laughs> and you get paid more probably and then some old person can pay eight thousand dollars to get a good litter of uh, of that blood oh my god you know what's weird is i was just thinking about this as i drove over here <laughs> <laughs> not specifically that but they shut down blood source over here and i used to donate blood a lot just because like i have rare blood and i really like needles for some reason so i was like well if i like both things why not do it um but unfortunately i also get really lightheaded when i do it and so i just kept thinking about that and i was like hmm weird <laughs> yeah um another thing about this is that it has obviously like i mean a lot of these have the same um, not the same, but they all have ethical concerns, right? And the one about this specific method is that, um, like, if it works, it basically allows rich people to basically buy, like, vitality of the poor. Um, yeah. And that seems unethical. I mean, you could argue the other way, but 
whatever. Because, I mean, I mean, it's all willingly, but still. Um, okay, now, and you mentioned this person, the Blood Countess um, is a person who, and I believe you, like, you brought it up to me. The Blood Countess is a person who um, did whatever necessary to get younger people's blood. She's a historical figure um, during uh, her reign of terror. Um she was known as the blood countess she was i guess like russian nobility in the 18th century or 19th century and um she apparently would like send people um to her castle like she'd have like her assistants like get young people and like take them to her presence oh, and <laughs> she'd, like murder them uh, apparently she murdered like 650 peasant girls wow um, and she but she was only convicted of killing about 80 of them i'm honestly surprised she was even convicted at all and they, they didn't just let her get away with it um yeah. but anyway yeah she was a sadistic bitch and she would like kill them and then bathe in their blood um because one time apparently she like was striking a young servant girl and she like hit the girl so hard that the girl bled and then uh the blood countess noticed uh that like the blood on her hand from the girl seemed to like revitalize her skin on her hand and so she was like like eureka and started killing hundreds <laughs> of girls so <laughs> do you think any actresses today would do that i mean like no but people today are injecting themselves with the young blood isn't that worse <laughs> <laughs> like uh, just putting it on your skin or you mean the she killing did part? kill 600 people <laughs> no i don't think people are killing people today for young blood unless you're like a witch um so if yeah if there's any witches tweet us please i mean honestly like after so many peasant girls killed i doubt this was about slowing down her aging i think she just had a thirst for blood because she was a fucking sadist yeah um, but anyway uh didn't work she's dead um <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know maybe she looked snatched she when she died <laughs> what maybe she looked snatched the day she died maybe she looked super young so i guess it did work yeah um were you gonna say something no so okay so this, this is fucking crazy so apparently people are drinking menstrual blood to- <gasps> <laughs> no now, here's the thing like injecting it makes sense the mice study though not replicated in humans did show results so like if i was gonna try one of these three that's the one i do Putting it on your skin just seems ineffective. Yeah. Drinking it is just fucking stupid to me because yeah, like not, how mm-hmm. is that like your your stomach acid is just going to like take care of that. It's not going to go anywhere. Like there's going to be no benefits. But people are doing it and they're doing it from menstrual blood of <sighs> all bloods. I don't know why, but they are. You can get really sick drinking regular blood. I can't even imagine drinking your uterine lining. So <laughs> so there you go. Um there are people out there who believe, yeah yeah there are people out there who believe that drinking menstrual blood is good for you and that it can act as an elixir that expands your life and rejuvenates your cells um again this is just a weird ass method because they're not it's not a transfusion they're just drinking it um but people swear by it some people i don't know who the fuck maybe tampon girl but um <laughs> yeah throwback when people ask what you did last thursday is this what you're gonna tell them yeah so <laughs> Oh my god. Um, another one of the uh, reasons that the article listed that was really interesting was again that um, basically just studying uh, the box jellyfish, which you mentioned. Um, because again, like I said, the jellyfish basically like regenerates when it's under stress or pain and it like kind of ages backwards for a while until it feels better and then it starts aging forward again. And so scientists really want to study this, but there's very little funding or interest. And so there hasn't been much there. I really think there should be a lot of money there. <laughs> but. Oh, <man. laughs> It is what it is. I just think that you're you're an anomaly because I feel like most of the world is severely depressed and can't wait to reach those pearly gates, you know? And, like, I don't get it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Out of the three, which one would you try? The transfusion, the putting it on your skin, or the drinking? Oh, God. Why is that even... <laughs> Obviously, the transfusions. I'm not going to make a menstrual blood smoothie. Well, I don't Add know. Add some maybe, strawberries in there. Maybe you think there's like danger in just like getting a transfusion for some stranger's blood. Maybe he has like AIDS, so maybe you'll want to just like not risk it well, and put it on your skin. 
<laughs> well, yeah, but I would hope that they would vet that first. But also, like, I just don't want to do that at all. Like, I don't want to live forever. Like, fuck that shit. Like, no. But you won't. You won't. You just live a couple more years because blood can't do that much of a difference. But you, you will look younger. Um, I'll just get Botox. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. It is like way cheaper. So <laughs> yeah, like proportionately. And, uh, and I'm half Asian. I was just hoping that that would help me stay young a little bit longer. I think. I think so. I think. I think. I mean, I see it with a lot of Asian people. So maybe you do have something going for you. I have chubby cheeks. So it always makes me look a little bit young. <laughs> yeah, plum face, plum face. Madonna yeah. wishes she had chubby cheeks so much that she has a pillow face now from all the filler. So, oh God, Madonna. Yeah, plumpness is a real thing. To all of you out there that think you're too plump or like you look fat in the face or you have chubby cheeks, trust me, when you're 60, you're going to love that. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I have a little bit of cheek and now I appreciate it. So listen, speaking of Asian people trying to be younger, um, this one's a little extreme. So Queen Shi Huang was the first emperor of the unified China. And uh, for that reason, actually, he wanted to, um, he started to get like a big head about things. He was like, I can never die. I'm the first emperor of this unified China. I must uh, like oversee it forever. And so he asked his servants um, and like alchemists, I guess, I don't know what the fuck, to like find a way for him to live forever. And the alchemist, this being like, I don't know what, like the fucking third century or something or even before that we're like hmm well it's the third fucking century and we don't know anything so mercury and <laughs> oh <laughs> they gave this guy like a thousand and one fucking elixirs that contain mercury and all kinds of potions and all kinds of weird mercury smoothies um hi mercury smoothies mercury smoothie sounds <laughs> like an alternate rock band name anyway um, yeah it does <laughs> well the guy fucking died obviously um <laughs> from all these concoctions in fact he died at the age of 49 um earlier than like even a peasant would die even back then like so yeah. there's that <laughs> i mean and like and like you'd think that that would work because you know this kind of people for example like i don't know bear grills kind of people who will like inject themselves with snake venom because what doesn't kill you make you stronger I think that there's, I think, I mean, obviously there's a science to that. Like vaccines are basically that. Like you train your mm -hmm. body to resist um, like threats like better. Um, mercury is like way over the line though. <laughs> uh, yeah. No to everyone. Uh, mercury is not snake venom. It will kill you almost instantly. I guess this guy was drinking concoctions that were like very diluted. That's why it took so long, but still. Yeah. Um, so um it, this is kind of um the next one's kind of um in uh, in vain with the brain one that you mentioned but you know the classic one um cryogenic freezing so yeah, yeah. okay Walt has entered the chat um <laughs> I mean, uh, can we get him out of the chat he's kind of racist <laughs> um zippity do that has left the chat so okay i mean the rumors obviously everyone knows about them if anyone out there doesn't know about them there's there's basically been like this very like pop culture-y rumor that Walt Disney put himself on ice um not like the ice skating shows on Disney uh, like <laughs> <the> ice <laughs> um uh basically it's like to preserve his body like once he died or actually some people say it's just his head um, oh, my God. Or, or I guess the technology for the whole body wasn't there yet in the 50s, whatever. But he froze himself in the hopes that technology in the future will be able to bring him back to life. There are people in 2019 who are doing this, by the way, or who are signing like contracts to allow. No. Like, yeah, yes, there are. To allow um, startup companies to freeze them once they die. And they send brains contract, or their bodies? Um, their whole body or the head queen. You can actually, there's, a, there's actually a premium. You can pay. Like, it depends on what you pay legit okay. like you can you can give so much for the head or if you want like the whole body you pay a premium so this reminds me of futurama, <laughs> it's literally like futurama. i just love yeah. that there are like like price ranges like um yeah. it's like it's like an in and out like menu like you want just like the like the single head or like the double double all your body um anyway so people <laughs> can basically freeze their bodies once they die to stop cellular decomposition and then like hope that this company or some other 
thing in the future will acquire the technology to allow humans to come back to life and they will be thought out and brought back to life. Now, that's a lot of trust, at least for me, being placed in some stranger company's hands. Yeah. Um, like, there could be a fucking fire and, like, all the bodies die. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I well, don't does know. that even, like, work? Because once you're frozen, like, isn't it technically death? Like, well, your cells die, right? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So, if you... Okay, no, no, no. The answer is no, Shannon. Listen. So, one, it depends on how you are frozen. If you're frozen too quickly, you will die because the cells will just explode. Um, but if you're not, you will not you basically kind of just like stop in time number two it also has to do with how long you're frozen because a, a contrary to what people believe if you freeze in like cryogenics you don't you can't stay like that forever you can stay like that for like a hundred years but cellular mm -hmm. decomposition is happening it's just happening very very slow so there's a time mm -hmm. limit so while disney has like what 30 more years to the for this technology to come <laughs> about otherwise his body's fucked so yeah um yeah I, I think it does make sense because it doesn't claim to actually like last forever um it's just yeah we don't have the technology yet but um i don't know we should do that uh no <laughs> for one I, it just goes back to like well they're gonna unfreeze me in a time i'm not gonna know all my friends and family are gonna be dead um what am i gonna do in the future like have a margarita with my head like no <laughs> margarita with my <laughs> I mean, you'll still have your taste receptors. You don't need a stomach to taste a margarita. So I don't know. Yeah, it just goes out of my <laughs> neck. That's not attached to a body. <laughs> just it goes. It just goes in like a bag, and then like oh your assistant God. like takes it. That's crazy. Uh, if I was gonna Wait, spend a... go ahead, go ahead. I have a question for you. Um, so out of the ones I talked about, so we have just replacing your organs with like cloned organs or whatever, it, or uploading to a cloud like the matrix or getting an artificial robot body which one would you do um what was the first one again it was just like replacing your organs as they die i'd say artificial robot body because i mean the <laughs> organs thing is just a it's just a temporary solution and it's co it's probably more costly in the long run because you have to keep getting them yeah I so mean, you're gonna you're gonna buy the car I'm basically, yeah. Okay. So interesting. But I'm not going to buy the whole plane. Like, that's basically the AI option. That seems, like, way beyond. And also, yeah. I don't like it anyway, because it reminds me of that short story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... Interesting. Okay, so there are monks who mummify themselves to death in the hopes of achieving immortality. So, lit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a bit about this. So, basically, through our history um there's been buddhist monks um that i've taken to like remote mountains um and then they like meditate for years in hopes of like i don't know achieving some kind of like religious transcendence or something and uh, then they decide to like leave their physical bodies um by self mummifying so <laughs> self mummifying is literally what it sounds like they um go on a special diet of air and then <laughs> they i mean i mean no i'm kidding like it's a special diet of very little food and it goes on for years they basically kill mm. themselves slowly till they become like super skinny think like nicole richie in 2003 skinny and then like as they get closer to dying they start like self mummifying um they like start eating like weird ash shit to like <gasps> so their organs like don't i don't know it's basically like yeah like a mummy like you want to preserve it as much as possible but they don't have actual embalming fluids like in the west so this is how they fucking do it i don't know um at least the buddhist monks in the mountains don't have it uh yeah they they become mummies and they think um that like they'll they wake up will make them what? The, like yeah the, the thing like they'll wake up in thousands of years when their wisdom is once again needed so it's a very Shit. philosophical kind of mummification maybe um, they will maybe they're right i don't know <laughs> yeah okay I, I forgot to tell like the, the, the final detail of this is really creepy so like basically you know like they're super skinny now they're eating ash to basically like start like self-embalming from the inside out um at that one point like they continuously uh, they continuously ring a bell um inside a chamber and are buried by their like friend by their monk friends <laughs> um <laughs> inside this chamber with just the slightest air hole then the oh person keeps ringing a bell to signal that they're 
is they're still alive and they're still meditating. They're meditating oh till gosh. the end, by the way. Uh, and when the bell stops ringing, because I like, guess not enough um, air is coming in through that little hole, or like the ash has fucked up their whole body from the inside out. Once the mm -hmm. like monk friends outside this box stop hearing the bell ringing, they ch seal the chamber, and that's it. Fuck. It's fucking like morbid. I don't know. That's uh, dark. Anyway, to end on a lighter note, <laughs> there was a man who injected himself with extracts from the testicles of guinea pigs and dogs. Um, That's because... a lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, uh, he, he thought this would like do it for him. Um, this was in the 19th century. This was a while ago. Back in 1889, a scientist named Brown Secord, um, who up to that time had been considered prestigious. Obviously, not anymore. Um he called people together for a shocking announcement about a new discovery that he had made. And he basically was like, hey, um, not only did I find a cure for impotence, but also an elixir of youth. Um, <laughs> it, I've been experimenting on myself by crushing out the testicles of a dog that I killed and <gasps> cut open and then straining it and making a solution with water uh, that I injected in my butt. And I think Shut that up. I feel younger. <laughs> yeah, this is basically the story. No, it's not. It's true. It's true. Um, did, it, like, did it work? Well, he's dead, so no. <laughs> I mean, he says that he felt more like vitality as soon as he did it. Um, he said that he had tried the same thing with testicles of a guinea pig, which had worked just as well as, as the dog testicles. Now, call me crazy, but to me, this is obviously the placebo effect. I think that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that like if you do something as shocking to your body as like straight up injecting like blended up dog balls, like your body's kind of like. Like, you're going to feel that placebo. That's a lot. Um, uh, you're going to feel something. I yeah, don't know what. Exactly. But... And, you, you, and you'll <laughs> interpret it as 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 that. He's like rotting from the inside out. He's like, I think I'm getting younger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, again, this was like the 19th century, late 19th century. This is basically like, think like, I don't know, like Sherlock Holmes, age, science. And it was like the beginning of, I guess you could call it modern medicine. So... If anything, he was a pioneer, a weirdo, but a pioneer. He uh, did what no one else was willing to do and would ever think of doing. Precisely. <laughs> um, that's what I have. <laughs> Wait, so, okay. What about crushing the dog balls and injecting it into yourself or drinking period blood? Which one would you do? I would drink period blood. I don't know what the fuck, like, those blended <laughs> up balls are going to do to my veins. My arteries are going to get clogged. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. I would have to dilute the period blood with something. I think it would have to be. Some... You would make you would make yourself a nice period day query. <laughs> yes, I would put some strawberry juice in there, some apple juice, some oh, ice, I can't. some a sprig of a sprig of mint. You know, really wash it down. <laughs> um, on that note, <laughs> everyone, thank you for listening to episode 20. 20 episodes. Can you believe it? That's a lot of episodes. I know it is. So listen, everyone, we are not on Twitter right now because Twitter H locked us because of a long, long story. But um, uh, we are on Facebook um, at Scary Talk. Actually, we have a better handle on Facebook than we had on Twitter. I'm shook. Um, the handle is at Scary Talk. It is our public page. All of our episodes are also promoted there. Um, we will probably be getting a Twitter soon and we'll update you on that so you can DM us um, topic suggestions. But till now, we are on Facebook and we are obviously on all podcast listening platforms like TuneIn and Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play. Um, you can still leave us reviews there and you can definitely message us on our Facebook page at Scary Talk. Shannon, do you have anything? There are rumors that the Zuck is already an AI. I believe it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, good luck with your search for eternal youth um, we'll see you next you. time <laughs> I'm on it I'll update you as soon as I have something the Mothman is real <laughs> and uh, I love you all thank you for 20 episodes uh, good night bye bye <laughs>